Hello everybody, welcome to the show. Today we have a great small space sequence set up. We're gonna walk you through a whole bunch of different ways to uh, handle it. Um, give us some thumbs up, some hearts, uh, so we know you're here and we know that you can hear us. I should have somebody right inside that door also confirming uh, that we can see and hear. And uh, I've got a little director over here. Isaac is the little green and red bar moving when I talk. Yeah? Do we have audio? Okay, I got a thumbs up from inside. We have audio. Okay, welcome everybody. Um, we hope that you are doing well. We wanted to uh, bring back some of these live sessions that we've done in the past. Um, have a sequence, a small space sequence, so that uh, many of you may have the space to set this up and try it at home. And we're going to walk you through the handling options that we practiced on this sequence. So um, let's get right to the sequence here. As we come out, we just have four jumps in a tunnel, and we have the dog coming this way on this jump. There's a backside jump here. This jump in this direction, back to this jump, and this jump. And this is a, a small space sequence from a trial, I, I think about five years ago. So we pulled this uh, from some of our archives to bring it to you guys. And it's an interesting sequence because um, it allows for a choice at this number two jump. So the dogs have a choice uh, on the backside. And when you have a backside choice, you actually have, um, uh, it, it kind of explodes the number of choices that you have uh, because of, um, they can do like the backside slice and they can do that in two directions. We can have the dog come uh, this way, do the backside slice. We can have the dog push to the far wing and do the backside slice. And we can have the dog do a loop-de-loop -loop wrap right here. And to make things even more complicated slash exciting, um, we have a traditional wrap choice with the next obstacle. Do you want to take the jump and turn right or take the jump and go left? So we're actually going to take um, three, all three options for this jump and combine it with both options from this jump. So we're going to run this six different ways. And there's a couple of different things that we want to get out of this. Um, first of all, we want to know which way is the fastest. And we want to know which way is the fastest for our dog. And we want you to know which way is the fastest for your dog and uh, the factors that go into what is fastest. But even if you you know, are 99% sure that you know which way is the fastest. Setups like this are great for being able to practice a lot of different handling with minimal setup because um, all of the different combinations set you up to do things like uh, a backside wrap uh, with a front cross and a backside wrap with a blind cross, a, uh, a serpentine with uh, a regular serpentine and a serpentine with a blind cross. And you get lots of um, practice with the different things and also lots of contrast training for your dog. So they really have to pay attention to what you're doing. So um, we're going to talk about these six different ways uh, one by one. And we're going to start off by bringing the dog over this jump and going with the shortest path to this jump, which is to come in here, real tight in off of this jump. And then we're gonna start with the slice here, come around and as the dog takes the slice, this is the most dangerous option for bringing in this off course right here. It's right there in the dog's face. So we need to do something to make sure that our dogs don't take that jump. Then we're gonna come into this wrap choice here. Now, uh, when we have a combination of, um, of wrap choices, a lot of times I like to kind of figure them out in reverse order. So first I'm gonna look at this wrap choice, then I'm gonna look at that wrap choice. And when we look at this wrap choice, uh, which wrap is easier for the dog depends on which wing we're coming from here. If we're coming from the dog to wrap this way than it is for them to wrap that way. If we're coming from this wing, then it's a little bit more equal 
maybe slightly easier for the dog to go in this direction. Then we're going to look at distance. When we look at distance, we have a slight advantage coming to this wing. We have a more direct line to the next jump. Whereas from this wing, because these two, two jumps, they're kind of offset a little bit. So we'll have a map for you later and you can see that um, the wing of this jump kind of lines up with the middle of this jump. So it's offset, which means you have more of an angle here, which means longer distance. But with this angle comes a better approach to the next obstacle over here. So we get an advantage to going to that side. So taken in isolation, um, it feels like the best option here is to come around this wing and head that way. The difference in yardage is very, very minimal, but the difference in angle is very advantageous. So given that, that we think it's better to turn this way, then if we back up, what gave us the best advantage for turning to the right after that jump? It was coming from this wing. So just in my analysis, I think that the fastest uh, way to run this is going to be to bring the dog here, take advantage of the slice. So I've got the shortest path here. I've got a great lineup to this jump, which sets up my preferred wrap choice here like this, and a nice line from here to the last jump. Handling wise, how are we going to do that? Well, I start my dog from a um, cone because it lets me kind of run this as if it was the middle of a course. So I send my dog around the cone, I indicate this jump, and then personally for myself, I use throttle handling here to pull my dog to the backside. So I'm going to say here, here, here to get my dog over the backside. Now remember, we have this scary jump here, so I'm going to do two things. So, uh, stopping my motion in that direction as early as I can, so some deceleration. I also going to use a bypass cue. So as I turn and he's thinking about that jump, I'm going to give him a side side and then I can come in here for the jump. In this case, because he's coming at a nice slice, I went ahead with the Yako turn here to create this turn. You could also just come in with a nice strong deceleration turn and go. Over here, another deceleration to turn to the final jump. So let's go ahead and look at our first demo. We have a video from earlier today, we're in the same clothes, uh, where we have Venture doing this and we have it in real speed and slow motion because it can be hard to see things uh, as they happen in um, real speed. So first video. So here you can see that throttle cue comes right away as he's still over the first bar. Here's the bypass cue that keeps his focus on me. And then I run into and out of that Yako really quickly to create that uh, strong direction change to that jump. All right, so that is the first option. Uh, that's shown and at the end of this live I'm going to give you a link that you can go to where you can download this course map as well so that you can set it up easily um, for yourself at home. Are we still doing good? All right, got my uh, inside viewer who's quality control. Okay. So um, for the next one we want to do the same S-shaped path here turning to the outside but now we want the dog to turn to the left over this jump as they come back. So the beginning part of this, we're gonna handle the same. I'm still gonna use this threadle, but, and this is where a really well-trained threadle uh, makes a big difference. I don't wanna get hung up having to wait for my dog here on the threadle, making sure that he's coming. I wanna trust that he understands that cue so I can continue to move forward and go right into a front cross. This takes this jump out of the picture and puts me on the inside wrap for turning to the left. So then I can come in, go right into a front cross wrap, come over here with a strong deceleration. Now, um, other options might be to come in with the threadle to do this, basically the exact same handling as the previous with the bypass. Now to rear cross this jump, 
but uh, that is likely not going to give us quite as good of a turn here as the front cross because the, the rear cross will signal a turn, but it doesn't necessarily signal a full wrap um, quite as well to the dog. So that's why we're going to go ahead and uh, use that threadle, that well-trained threadle that we can continue to move through in here and to go into our front cross. So now we're going to look at video number two. So here's that threadle cube and I'm running through the whole thing, go right into the front cross there. You can see it creates this nice, nice tight turn at that number two jump. Another front cross and I'm right where I need to be for that deceleration cue. All right, so those are our uh, first two lessons, I mean, our first two exercises. So now we're going to take a look at pairing the loop-de-loop -loop wrap here uh, with both of these choices over here. So to get the loop-de-loop -loop wrap, um, we're going to, again, get our dog started here. I chose to go ahead and front cross to go right into the push. It puts me on the inside of the loop-de-loop -loop wrap. Now, when I want to turn to the right, I want to do the wrap and I want to keep my dog on this left hand side creating this kind of channel through here I can easily bring him up to this jump and uh, turn this way now I chose here to go ahead and front cross for the wrap here and the reason that I did that is that in coming from this direction you have a bit of an ambiguous approach to this jump and if I um, simply shoulders, or, or if I try to do a Yako turn here, this pressure on the dog might have him reading this as a rear cross. And so for me, a safer option is just to come in and do a nice, easy front cross, and then to just rear cross this jump, which is no trouble for me at all. So we've got the loop-de-loop -loop wrap and the right turn. Go ahead and play video number three. And you can see how I'm going to be very clear with which side of my body I want him on there. So I want to make sure that he does not think that I'm blind crossing on that loop-de-loop -loop wrap. I'm going to really connect with him um, and uh, keep my eyes on him. So that's the third way to run it. Now the fourth way to run it, we're going to do this same loop-de-loop -loop wrap. But now we want to turn to the other direction. And um, so again, front cross to the back side. But now, as he's wrapping, I'm going to cut across, put my body behind this wing, and pick him up on my right for, for a uh, blind cross. And the reason is because it puts me on the inside of the curve. Now that we're turning to the left, the inside of the curve is to have dog on right going into this jump. And then I can go right into a front cross. Again, putting myself on the inside of the curve for the final jump. So let's take a look at that uh, number four option where we add in the blind cross. So you can see here that I want to be really careful picking my do dog up off of the loop-de-loop -loop wrap. So when I'm doing the blind, I want to very strongly push back on my right to make it very clear for my dog that I want him on the right. But it's not just to make sure that uh, he knows I want him on my right. It's to protect my ability to do uh, what we did in exercise three, which was to do the loop-de-loop -loop wrap and keep him on this side. I don't want him defaulting to going around my back. 
So I need to be really strong on this side and really strong on the other side. There's no real um, default behavior that I want for him. I want to uh, be telling him explicitly what I want him to do after he does that loop-de-loop -loop wrap. All right, so our last option for this jump is going to be to keep all the speed and momentum that we have from our dog and push them to the far wing. Uh, they get uh, a nice run up of speed here uh, rather than having to force them, their, their path and their turn to this backside. So we can just push to the backside. And once again, now, depending on which way we're gonna go, we're gonna go to the right first. So to put myself on the inside of the curve, I'm gonna connect as he comes over the ball the very strong pick him up here on the left as I come in to this jump and here again I elected to front cross into the rear cross to create this line to the final obstacle so the it's going to be the backside serpentine uh, keeping the dog on that inside arm the whole time for the number one two three jump so let's go ahead and see video number five So I commit him to the backside, connect there, but you can see that I move through the entire time, creating some space and some distance for myself. And uh, you always want to look to create that space on course. In this particular sequence, we're going right into another wrap. So we don't need that space, um, but if I were doing this exact same maneuver, and I was going to this jump and on in that direction it, on a really long line, the space that I created there would be really important. And I created that by trusting his backside, trusting his commitment here, not waiting for him, but as soon as I see that he's committed, continuing to move so that I'm up here, he's back there, and he's chasing uh, my, the arm that I'm presenting him, in this case, my left arm. So now our sixth choice is going to be to push to the back side. Now we want to push there. What do we want to do? We want to be on the inside of the curve. So now we're going to pair our back side, SERP, with the blind cross. Again, putting my body behind this wing so that when I turn and present my right arm, he's got a very clear line to the correct side of my body. I'm kind of tucking myself behind the wing. So push to the back side, connect, reach back here on the right, putting myself on the inside of the curve, putting myself on the inside of the curve, and finishing with the final jump. So exercise number six. So you can see by the time he comes around that wing, I'm looking over that right shoulder and it's very, very clear which side of my body that I want him to go to. All right, so those were our six choices based on uh, this wrap choice setup. Here they are numbered. And so now the question for you is, uh, what do you think as an audience was the fastest path? So just type in a number, one, two, three, four, five, six, and they're in pairs. So one and two uh, have the same choice at number two jump, and then the two different choices at number three. Uh, three and four have the loop-de-loop -loop wrap, and then the two jump, uh, choices at jump three. And uh, five and six have the push to the backside with the choice at those two jumps. So, anybody have any guesses on what they think is the fastest? 
So here we have the actual times from this. So if we look at this, we're going to see that um, the, the initial path that I thought was going to be the fastest was the fastest. Um, the loop-de-loop -loop uh, so the interesting thing here to me is that 1, 3, and 5 were all faster than 2, 4, and 6. And remember, the only difference between um, the top row and the bottom row is the choice that we make at number 3. And so that tells us very clearly that uh, turning to the left, at least for my dog, at number 3 is the wrong choice. Every single time, no matter how you, no matter what your approach was, it was the slower choice for the dog to turn left. Um, the difference is uh, different for each of the three openings. So the biggest difference comes with the one and two pair. It's the very small difference in the three and four pair, uh, and somewhere in the middle for the five and six pair. So, <laughs> sorry, I'm hearing a poodle going, uh, being very sad inside the house. Um, so these were the times for my dog. And what I would encourage you to do is to set this up at home and to, um, and to time this for your own dog and then come back, come back to this thread, uh, put your, um, put your findings in the comments, see if you got the same, um, the same differences that I did in terms of, uh, what was fastest. Go ahead and put the video back on me, buddy. So one thing that I noticed on playback is that uh, my dog was a little bit weak on this turn when he was coming from this direction. So you could see that every single time he came around this wing and he came to this jump, he was a little wider here. Now, part of that's to be expected because of the angle of approach, but part of that is probably his own little personal weakness. Uh, that I could improve upon to narrow up some of those gaps. So those are the kinds of things that I'm going to be looking for. Um, for you guys, yes, you have questions? No. You want to talk? <laughs> I'm getting sign language uh, from uh, someone over here. Um, so we have a download for you guys, uh, and it has this um, sequence. It shows the six different ways that we ran it, and it also has a nested sequence. Um, yeah, you can go ahead and put that up. So if you go to this URL, which is, let's see, baddogagility.com slash March 19, where 19 is the numbers 1 and 9, March 19, um, you can get a download of this, as well as a nested sequence um, that I put together as well. Um, that is much, much more challenging. So uh, it's going to really stretch your, um, stretch your capabilities there. All right, I think if someone wants to say a few words, back to the video. Uh, here. Can they see us from there? Yes, here, maybe a little further back. Okay, sure, sure, sure. All right, here, I'm gonna just give him the... <laughs> there we go. Thank you. What a gentleman. Hello, everyone. I hope you enjoyed the presentation. I just wanted to hit a couple of high points. So, of course, you know, coronavirus is kind of taking over uh, our world and uh, dog agility is definitely included. Trials have been shut down, major events, competitions have been canceled. We don't know how long this is going to go on. Um, w probably well beyond the, the next uh, two weeks. I think people are starting to realize we're going to have to settle in for the long haul. And so I just want to talk very briefly about the stress and anxiety everybody must be feeling because we've been feeling it, right? So you've probably been feeling it. And so I wanted to talk a little bit about that. Um, I think we're coping better now. Everybody's kind of in a new routine, and I think that's part of it. So signs of stress that you may be having, if you have fear and worry about yourself or loved ones. So a lot of us are caring for um, parents who are older, uh, grandparents, and so that's causing you some stress. If you have changes in your sleeping or eating habit, that's a sign of stress. And uh, the time change probably didn't help. And if you're having problems concentrating, that's a sign of stress. If you have increased use in the following, alcohol, tobacco, or drugs, that's probably a sign of stress. My drug of choice is, of course, sugar, right? I have, I have really brutal candy cravings right now. I just want to eat all the sweet things. I want to eat all the ice cream. Uh, so, you know, I just want to put that out there. These are all signs of stress. I've experienced everything on this list, okay? Um, and so it's important to recognize that and say, hey, 
I'm feeling a little stressed out about this. And admitting it to yourself, admitting it to your friends and family, I think that's kind of where we can all come together as a community. Uh, that's why we wanted to start these back up again. This isn't something that we had planned on doing before the virus came. Uh, now that it's here, it's something that we want to do to kind of keep everybody connected as much as possible. Um, uh, things that we can do. So number one, and these are all recommendations that are coming from uh, the CDC, Centers for Disease Control here in the United States, in concert with uh, uh, mental health professionals, right? So the number one thing you can do, it's really hard to do, take breaks from the news coverage on the virus. Yes, we want to stay informed. Yes, we want to follow what's going on according to the CDC and the World Health Organization, the WHO. That's going to be your most reliable source for news, but we kind of want to take a break from everything else. We want to take a break from social media. Um, those, those people are going to feel better and less anxious. They're already putting out preliminary studies and surveys that are showing this exact same thing. So if you guys have been on it nonstop, uh, several hours, you're scrolling through your free feed, just take a break. I did that and suddenly I felt a lot better about things, all right? Um, number two, you want to take care of your body, right? That means sleep, eating the right stuff, trying to get your exercise in. That's a big one, especially for those of us who like to go to the gym and now that's kind of been taken away from you. So be mindful of that. Uh, number three, you want to develop other activities. This is hard to do because as dog people, as dog agility people, dog agility is our activity, right? When I was a doctor, I'd like... I had so much stress from that job, agility is what gave me a break from that stress, right? And now that's been taken away from us. So we want to get into some other activities. There are other things you like to do, not just watching TV and Netflix and things like that, you know, but reading books, writing, journaling, um, arts and crafts, and uh, things that we can do with our dogs that are not agility. So a lot of us don't have any equipment at all. We are going to try and do some stuff with like, I think, one jump, two jump. I'll probably uh, be doing something around that. Um, uh, we're going to get, uh, probably get Jennifer out here doing something about that. Not out here, but. Not, well, <laughs> not here, but from Ohio, uh, her place in Ohio. And um, there are other things that you can be doing with your dogs to get them ready to work on skills that are just fun and maybe not so useful for agility, but also skills that are fun and useful for agility. So when this thing resolves when we get back to trialing when these big competitions come back you are going to be ready okay um, the fourth and this is the most important thing and this is what you're doing here just by being here and thank you so much for joining us is connecting with other people right you never realize how much you connect with other people on a daily basis until they tell you go home and don't come out of your house right and now I'm connecting all the time with my kids and my wife and it's a little too much <laughs> so you want to connect with your friends Right? And so a great way to do it, not just by message, messenger or email, but by voice and video. This is really one of the reasons why we wanted to do this, because we wanted you to see us and hear us and not just uh, not just get an email from us or anything, because I found that, um, you know, when I call somebody who normally I would only message, like Jennifer, we do 99% of everything that we do together is uh, by messenger. But I called her the other day and when I got off the phone, I felt better. Yeah. I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed like hearing her voice and talking to her and hearing her laugh. And, and so um, we think that that, that audio video connection is really important. We want to bring that to you guys. So, and we, and we love seeing your comments back and, and knowing that you are there and that you're uh, connecting with us. Yeah, so get that social connection going. It's going to really help you guys uh, feel a lot better. Thank you so much for joining us today. All right, wait, wait, we have a little oh, bit more. Sure. So one thing that I'm going to do real quick is um, that the challenge sequence that you get if you uh, put in your email and get the download, it's a nested, it's something that we didn't do out here. It's a completely different sequence with the same jumps. No, 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 you hold that because I'm going to bring a dog out. So oh, you're going to hold this for okay. a second. Um, so anyway, uh, we're going to do one live live with a dog live demo here today. And that's going to be on that sequence. I'm not going to talk it through it. I'm just going to run through it one time. My preferred handling with Venture. And then we have two moments of sunshine for you at the end of this podcast to help brighten your day. Um, one of them will be coming from our daughter. And the other one will be uh, a view of a very, very cute, adorable poodle face, which should make everybody super happy. So you hold on to that. If you want, okay. you can narrate what I'm doing and I'm sure. going to go get my dog. She's walking into the house. <laughs> it's not golf. You don't have to whisper. <laughs> She's opening the door. Here comes the dog. It's Venture. He's a Border Collie. He's reddish and white. Fish? 
Don't block the view. Oh, yeah, let me get out of the way here. I don't actually know what the sequence is. Let's take a look here. Let's start them off with the cone, into the tunnel, to the backside of purple, big D cell. Oh, into a very nice throttle. That's a tough throttle there. And oh, error. Yes, she never fully rotates to the red jump. I think she needs to commit to that a little bit more. There you go. Very tough throttle again, beautifully done. Very nice. So that was a very interesting mistake they had there at the red jump. Coming out of the tunnel, just not rotating enough. Just the smallest little 30 degree turn and the dog refuses. Good stuff, that hurts. Okay, here comes uh, here comes Hannah. Hannah's our 10 year old, she just turned 10 and her birthday, we had to cancel it. We had to cancel it, it was a uh, Sunday and uh, she couldn't uh, have the party, so. But she is gonna bring you a little bit of sunshine with a knock knock joke. She's been going through her book and uh, picking out a joke for you guys to brighten your day. Uh, the camera's up there. I see it through here. Right here. Yep, just talk Stand into by. the mic, just like regular. Go ahead. Knock knock. Who's there? Champ, a uh, champ. Champ who? Champ Foo the dog. He needs to be cleaned. Bye bye. Very solid advice. Very, very nice. All right, and now Sarah's got one more thing she said. I think. Are, are you doing it? She said something about the poodle. Oh, you're bringing the poodle. You should just let the puppies run around and rip. Are you going to bring her like right up to the camera? Shine. This is Emma. That face I'm not even sure we can see. So. Yeah, there you yeah. go. See that little poodle face? So Emma says to stay safe. Oh, you have the mic, I guess. Yeah. Emma says to stay safe and uh, enjoy your small space training. Okay. Happy training, everybody. Just put them down, let them run okay. around. I'll, there we go. Uh, I'm gonna, I have treats and a clicker. Okay. So you can just keep it on. Let the other dog out too. Okay. Are, are we? Are you want me to? Let them run around. Okay. All right. All right. We're gonna let these dogs run around. On camera, or we're signing off. <laughs> All right. The spell on says to have the dogs on camera for a minute. So this is like rolling the credits. Go ahead and let uh, Ellie out too. So we have the whole family here, uh, no school right now in, uh, well, most of the United States, so. And there's the golden. So these guys are uh, best pals. This is our own version of a, uh, yeah, oh yeah, no, we'll just do the puppies. These are our golden girls, two of them. All right, everybody, thank you for joining us today. We do plan to uh, do these probably once a week for as long as uh, quarantine is going on. Keep everybody's spirits up. And that's it for this week's show.